Aloha, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Weekly Edit. We're going to get really geeky this week, and we're going to make our own base curves. Um, I've written a script that can help you make a base curve for every ISO and every model of camera that you want to do it for, and hopefully take some of the chore part out of it and make it a little bit easier. So a uh, base curve working in the RGB color space um, kind of sets the intensity for each uh, the, or the luminosity for each uh, pixel. So it maps brightness on one axis and brightness on another axis where you've got your input brightness and you've got your output brightness. There you go. Okay, so um, in case you haven't done it before, if you've got some deep, deep shadows, you can switch this to logarithm and modify it yourself. And that'll enable you to get uh, some deep shadows to come out if you want to hand make a base curve for an extreme situation. But usually you want one that's profiled to your uh, sensor and the uh, amp chips that are inside your camera. And so there's a tool that is included with Darktable that looks at the JPEG that's produced by your camera's internal calculations and the uh, raw image that isn't, and then compares the two and comes up with a mapping of this base curve right here, okay? And that's gonna be a custom base curve for your camera. Um, there's quite a difference in the base curve when you shoot at different ISO levels, so I wanna create a base curve for each ISO that I normally shoot at. I don't know what other factors might be involved. I guess it's possible if you're shooting under really, really cold or really, really hot conditions that you might want to make base curves for those two. But uh, I haven't experimented with that. So anyways, let's get started. So this is an image I got off of Darktable site. And it's just got um, something really dark, something really light, and it, nothing's in focus, and there's gray area in between. And this is great. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a picture of this, and you don't need to print it. You can take a picture of it by just pointing the camera straight at the screen here. And uh, I've got a, a copy of this file on my website. So you're going to take a picture of this, and you're going to take a picture of it with a high enough shutter speed that this dark part here... Um, is black like it's past gamut so that your um, under over exposure indicators are flashing okay and then you're going to increase the uh expo the shutter speed you're going to increase the exposure time decrease the shutter speed so that you go one step like um, twice as long of an exposure and you're going to just keep going one stop more and you'll double the exposure and keep doubling the exposure until you take a shot where this white part is flashing to indicate it's out of gamut. Because you want to go past white and past black. But you're going to have to do it in multiple shots because you, you can't do it all in one shot. All right. So it takes like, I don't know, five shots or seven shots, depending on um, what's required. But it's okay as long as you go past it on both sides. So here's a little uh, roadmap I made. The first thing we got to do is we got to make the tools that we need. The second thing we got to do is take the pictures we need. And the third thing we have to do is build the base images and put them in Darktable's database. Okay, let's open a terminal window and do a little copying and pasting. This first part here, what that does is it backs up your Darktable database. Okay, so that if something goes wrong, you can just copy this backup over it and you'll have your original. All right, this part here, git clone, what that's gonna do is it's gonna go out to the internet and it's going to download the uh, source files for building Darktable from scratch, okay? And this is gonna take a little while because there's a lot of them. So I'll come back in just a little bit and we'll pick up again. All right. It's done downloading. Let's see, next thing, uh, we're gonna CD to the base curve tool directory and CD to build after making a directory called build. So we'll do all that. Now we're here in build. Okay, and we have to do this. And this is really important, those two dots at the end. Don't forget those. Yay, it worked. If it 
doesn't work, then you might have to like update a library or something like that. I hope it works well for you. I mean, you, it doesn't require a lot of libraries, so it should be trivial if it doesn't go to make it go. Okay, and then the last thing is we have to install the uh, files that we compiled. And it's important that this be done with sudo because it's going to storm in slash bin and you have to have uh, root permissions to do that. And the reason it stores them in dash bin is now all users have access to them. And the two tools that installed were DT Curve Tool and DT Curve Tool Helper. Okay, so now we're going to do the part where we take the pictures. So there's a, a sample.jpg file that you can use that's on, um, on my website. And uh, there's a couple of things you need to know on your camera. One is you have to be in sRGB, okay? So that's pretty trivial. You gotta go into the menu and select your um, color space. You may already be in sRGB. If you're not, you're probably shooting in Adobe. And the other thing is that you have to have raw plus JPEG, okay? This only works on raw files, this base curve. So, um, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the in-camera JPEG that was created and then compare the uh, brightness of the pixels with the uh, raw image to build the base curve. It's going to go through and build a base curve for all the ISOs that you want. So um, we're going to be doing this at like 64 ISO and then I'm going to do the whole thing again at 100 and at 200 ISO and uh, in a minute here I'm going to show you how I take the pictures with my camera. Okay, here's the most important thing that uh, I think you have to remember. When you're done with this, don't forget to turn your camera back to its original settings. Otherwise you're going to be shooting in sRGB and RAW plus JPEG for a month before you like figure out that you changed it to do this project. Okay. All right, so here's how I got it set up. On my monitor, I've got this image and I've got my camera set up so it's looking at it and that the image fills the frame. So I'm missing part of the image, but I got all the different shades of gray. Okay, so um, I'm shooting this one at ISO 64 at a 15th of a second. We'll take a shot and then we'll look at it and none of it's flashing. I'm not out of gamut. Okay, it's dark but it's not past the um, information of the pixels. I gotta go past it. So I'm gonna set my shutter speed a little bit faster here. We'll go up to a 30th of a second. And I'll take a picture and see it's flashing. I'm gonna get it so it's just a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Nice, big, solid flashing area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a number of shots here, and then I'm going to um, go up one stop, take a number of shots, and go up one stop, and keep doing that until um, I've got the white area flashing. Not there yet. Okay, now a large area of white is flashing. So that bracketed that ISO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that for every ISO that I use. So the next one I'll do is 100, and then 200, 400, 800, 16, 32, and 6400. And if you want, you can do that for each camera. And it should build different base curves for each camera and each ISO combination. All right, now we've got all our images here, and I've got them in this directory called Base Curve. And there's a bunch of raw images and JPEG images, and um, we're going to process them now. So we're down here, and there's this little bit of the script that I've written, and I think this will really help out. Okay, um, on the Darktable website, it's got this number at 16, and I believe this is the number of nodes that get created on the base curve, and I found that I get much nicer looking curves if I turn this number down. So I turned it down to 6. Okay. Uh, the way that this whole script works is it goes through and 
in this top part here, it creates a little database by looking at all the raw files and seeing what model camera and what ISO the shots are at. It makes a, a list of all the combinations of model and ISO and then reads from that list um, one entry at a time which would be for instance A7 at 64 ISO and then because it's got this little database it made it goes through and finds all the files that were shot at that ISO and uses this tool right here DT curve tool helper it's one of the ones that we built when we did all this okay and that dark table curve tool helper what it does is it populates a database every time it runs through a file and matches up the raw with the JPEG it adds more information to that database so it goes through all the different files that have the same ISO and model populates that database when it's all done doing that then it runs the second tool here DT curve tool and what that does is it uh, in a two-part process here it creates a shell script and then runs the shell script but what it does is it adds entries to a database that Darktable has and that's why Darktable needs to not be running when you run this because Darktable will put a lock on that database and won't let you modify the records okay so then this runs through, modifies the records, adds the entry into the Darktable database, and then runs through all again with the next ISO and model combination, and keeps doing that until it's all done. When it's all done, it just returns here, and when you go into Darktable, you should see all of your entries. If you ever want to redo it, you have to go through in Darktable and delete the uh, um, entries that you have. Otherwise, this will just make a second entry, and you'll have two, of a, two different ones. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a script and we're going to populate it with this code. And then we're going to make it so we can run it. chmod makes it executable. Okay, and then um, we're going to run that script. And when we run that script, it's going to give us an error saying that when it tried to input the file here with this uh, DT curve tool, that it couldn't find a unique record or some kind of an uh, error that has to do with the record being unique. And you can just ignore that. It actually makes the entry uh, properly. All right, this is going to take a very long time to run, probably an hour. So we'll come back. All right, it's all done. Um, this part where it says error, uh, unique, don't worry about that. Everything worked out just fine. And even though this says N16, um, we set it to six here, so everything should be fine. All right, and this code right here is on my website. And uh, you can find that at, um, let's see, uh, weeklyedit.com slash base curve huh. okay let's open dark table and see if all our new presets are there here we go and there we are oh that's beautiful look at all these yay so we have presets for two different cameras because I did two different types. And they're set up by ISO. And I'll show you what I do. Um, let's see, this camera here is the RX100 and it was shot at 400 ISO. Okay, so let's say I brought up that. I can go to edit this preset and say auto apply, okay? And the model should be the same as this right here. Okay, and then the ISO, 400, up to 400. Raw images only, and click OK. And what this is going to do is it's going to auto-apply this base curve to every 
ISO 400 image that comes out of this camera. And I'm going to go through and do that for each of these and set up an auto preset for every single one of these. And then uh, I'll be all set. Yay, this is going to be great. All right. All right, you can be part of a project uh, at raw.pixels.us. They need raw images. And you can upload them right here, but you got to read this stuff first because most of my files um, wouldn't work. And I had to actually look for some that would work. Okay. So properly exposed, that was an issue because I bracket so many of my shots. A lot of them are um, overexposed or underexposed in parts of the image. Okay. Landscape orientation, I shoot a lot of portraits, so I define ones for that. And ones without people, there you go. So based on all of that, I found a couple of images and I'm going to upload them and be part of the project. Let's see. Okay. And then my raw file and then upload. All right. And you can be part of that too.